Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Friday Night Frenzy, the show the players watch. I'm Sam Ali, and what a night of high school football action we have. I'm more excited than my dad at a Home Depot store. So let's get to it. Our game of the week was the battle for Delta County as 5-1 Escanaba hosted 6-0 Gladstone. We start this game in the fourth. Eskimo is already up 14-0. They hand it off to the big man, Cody Vandermissen. He scores to make it 21-0 Eski. A little later, Eskimos get the ball back. Craig Kameen finds Scout Wonder, and the Wonder Boy will do the rest. Jukes out two defenders, and he will score. The route is on in Escanaba. 28-0 Eskimos. But don't count out the Braves just yet. Aaron Young slings it. The ball is bobbled in the air, and Spencer Husby ends up with it, and he could go all the way. Braves get their first touchdown of the game off a pick six from Husby, but then the Eskimos showed why they are the best team in Delta County. Nicholas Anati takes the jet sweep all the way to the house. Escanaba comes away with the win tonight, 34-14, handing Gladstone their first loss of the season. We go now to Marquette. Redmond playing in the Dome tonight, hosting Lakeland Union from Wisconsin. After a defensive stop, Andrew Gale gets the ball rolling, or running, I should say. Thunderbirds bring him down. Couple plays later, that's Gale again, trucking it into the end zone for a Redmond touchdown. It's now 7-0 MQT. The Thunderbirds would not go down easily as Austin Wanty sends his pressure, scrambles and lobs one down the sideline to Ray Rentmeester for the large gain, but they couldn't score any points. Moments later, Redmond execute the hook and lateral, Ethan Martish to Gale, and he gone. Five TDs for Gale as Marquette goes on to win this one, 55-6. We go to the scoreboards as Menominee gets a nice bounce back win tonight over the Sioux. 42-14, Ethan Molesky finished with 287 total yards and five TDs for the Maroons. And it was Kingsford all over Iron Mountain, 42-7. The all-time series is now tied for the first time ever at 45-45-3. We go to Nagani now, homecoming night for the Miners as they hosted Manistique. Second quarter, Miners up 20 to nothing. Jason Waterman finds Luke Skubes in the end zone. Extra point is good, and Nagani is up 27 to nothing. A little later, Emeralds forced to punt. This will be a high kick that will be fielded at the Nagani 30-yard line. Drew Duchesne with it, and Duchesne, well, he's going to make it four straight weeks with a return TD. He had three touchdowns on the night as the Miners win their fourth in a row, 42-8 over Manistee. We jump now over to Gwynn as the Model Towners welcomed Hancock to town. First quarter, Gwynn down 7-0, but they are driving. Handoff goes to Tucker Taylor, and he takes it down the far sideline. He'll shed a bunch of tacklers before he is pushed out near the 20-yard line. A few plays later, handoff goes to Seth Aho, and he punches it in for six. Model Towners tied this game up, but then the Bulldogs' offense began to pick up steam. On fourth down, ball goes to Alex Nordstrom, and the hockey player skates his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Hancock gets the road win over Gwynn, 56 to 32, the final score. How about we head down to Norway as the number one ranked Knights faced Newberry. Jump in the first quarter, Indians already up 7-0 and they wanted to double that number. Jeff Rahilly pinballs his way into the end zone for six. Extra point made makes it 14-0 Newberry, but the Knights would answer back. Josh Plant to Kano Ortman down the sideline and he's got it for the touchdown. That made it 14-7 Newberry, but when the clock hit zeros, the Indians would hand the Knights their first loss of the season, 28-14, the final there. Let's get some more scores as Calumet gets a big win tonight over Lance, 22 to 14. Both teams are now four and three, and Munising had no trouble at home against Charlevoix, 33-7. The final there, Alec Blank had two rushing TDs and one passing TD, while Matthew Revord finished with 16 tackles and one interception for Stang Nation. Well, let's check out some eight-man action. Two of the top teams in the UP, Rapid River versus Stevenson. First quarter, and the handoff goes to Montel Glover as he breaks to the sideline, and this is how we do it. It's Friday night. Glover finds the end zone. Eagles go up 6-0. A little later, the Rockets get the ball at the goal line. Brett Lundquist squeezing his way in for the touchdown. 
Two-pointer was good as R squared took the lead, but then the Eagles, well, they showed why they're the number one eight-man team in the state. Jesus Becerra with the rock, and he will score. Stevenson had the lead at the half, but the Rockets, well, they were in spoiler mode tonight. Inside the five-yard line, it's Lundquist floating it up to Tyler Sundling, who makes the acrobatic touchdown catch, and Rapid River knocks off the number one-ranked Eagles 16-14, the final score.